Hello, loves. Welcome to Angels Don't Lie. I'm your host, Jeannie Street. And today I'm very excited to be back with episode four of our Goddess You interview with my beautiful team, Sophia and Colleen. And today, yeah, we're so excited. We're going to go over the last three principles. And as you can hear, I'm a little under the weather, but pulling it together. Welcome, ladies. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Thanks so much for having us back, Jeannie. Always a pleasure. Mm. Yes, it is. So I'll kind of lead us in with, you know, this is part four. And so with this being part four, the previous parts, if you haven't caught them, we've been talking about the first nine principles of The Goddess You, which is Jeannie's first book, The Goddess You, 12 Principles for Living in Soul Alignment. And they are incredible and they work. I'm a testament to them, they work. Um, so we started with, I like to kind of talk about the chapters, the principles that have led up to what we're gonna be talking about today because they're consecutive and they build on one another. So we started with quieting the mind. And if you wanna hear more about that, please do tune into part one of this series. Uh, we went on to self-love after that which brought us to changing your reactions. We discussed energy basics and healing the block. We went on to let it go and then chakra basics and healthy, wealthy, and wise. We left off on keep calm and now we're gonna start with help, I've lost my balance. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today and asking questions about and hearing more from Jeannie on the book that she wrote. She smiles at you, she'll say, Angels don't lie. Angels don't lie. Angels don't lie. No, no, angels don't lie. Angels don't lie. No, 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 no. You know, as we're starting today, um, as I've been working on my own personal balance uh, from being ill, Colleen's working on her balance as she is navigating, you know, family, uh, to say big family stuff. And um, Sophia, I think you're working on balance too, I'd say. We were just talking about the card that keeps popping up for you that keeps like falling out of the goddess you deck. And it's about you using your intuition and staying balanced in that, right? Yes, yes. So you have a, a card deck that goes along with this book. Um, and they're they're really, really lovely. And I think that they expand upon the the book because some of the things that are in here, they're not e they're not in the book. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I just keep pulling this ch uh, chakra basics principle seven about the solar plexus chakra and emitting this warm energy from the solar plexus chakra and keeping me in a rest restorative balance and my yeah, powerful intuition. Mm. So yeah, I'm definitely finding my own balance for sure. Yep. As we've already talked about in the first three times that we've been together, um, all the principles layer upon one each other. They get interwoven. We go back and have to repeat the first one when we're on the 10th one. And it's just kind of a lifestyle that we incorporate. Um, but you talk about how balance and calm go together. And so calm was the one before this. And mm -hmm. without one, you can't have the other. And it's almost like the chicken and the egg, like, which one comes first, but it doesn't matter because they have to come, both of them. So um, so do you want to speak to that a little bit, what you mean by needing one to have the other? Yeah, I always thought that was something that just got me like when I was writing the book and I was just recalling about what it took to, to be in the place that I was. And I remember, um, you know, just searching, 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 like how can I have balance when I'm like, I don't feel balanced. I feel chaotic. I feel crazy. And, um, and that's why that chicken and the egg, you know, which one comes first. It's like, wait, until you are calm in your being, until you start to navigate away from whatever external energy you're attached to, whether it be drama, anxiety, um, if it's an inner story and that inner conflict, 
that balance is going to elude you. So the calm has to come from the shifts. That's why the, I love how the principles layer together. You can't, the, the angels just brought that in just perfectly. Um, so that's where that really came from. Yeah, I totally, when you were talking, like change your reactions were just like blaring in the background too, because mm -hmm. I feel like in order to stay calm, you have to not let the external <laughs> world, world influence, you know, what you think, how you behave, like all the things. And so yes. they just are so interwoven. It's incredible. Yes. Um, and you, you also say the first step to balance is acknowledging that you're out of balance. Yeah. So it's, it's something that I think that we run from having having a chaos in our life we don't want to feel like we're zipping all over the place like we might ignore it or deny it but if we can look it in the face and we can speak to it then we can find where we can turn that into balance like we can call the chaos out is when we can get clarity on okay so these are my next right steps and um that's a lot how it is even speaking to spirit it's like tuning in to an energy that is effortless but you have to quiet yourself enough internally in order to do so and that's when the balance really happens yeah i feel like sometimes you're so used to living life the way you live it and even if it feels a little off like you'd like it to be differently mm -hmm. it's like you don't even know that there's a different choice to be had and so like like you said like just becoming aware that, oh, this doesn't need to stay like this. I don't need to react like that. I don't need to freak out when something happens. I can, I can tune back in and see what's right for me. And, and like you said, all three of us are really leaning into these practices currently with what we have going on in our life. And without them, I'd really be in a different place. I really would. It's still, it's still a struggle because there's just too many things happening, but, but it definitely is so that's that's the big three little threes right like mm -hmm. you you can like reflect on that so easily when you're in a space where you are it's like wait <sighs> yeah can i breathe can i make time to rearrange my energy to rearrange my thoughts to maybe put a pause to the old patterning you know and it's not that i want people to resist who they are i want them to go a little further beyond the, the habits that, and the thoughts and the reactions that they have taken on to go a little bit further to see like what could be possible here. Yeah. And for me in my life, I had set myself up to rescue and fix. If somebody was off balance or feeling struggle, I could be there to help and support mm -hmm. and do whatever it took to help them. And I'm finding First off, it's not good for me because then I'm depleting myself because I can't be everywhere to everybody um, or everything to everybody or everywhere because I'm in a different state right now. Um, so working on keeping myself balanced serves them better and it allows them to pull on their own inner strength and have to rely on their own you know, inner wisdom. I'm in Florida and all my family is in Connecticut except I'm with my parents because my dad is very ill. So. Um, it, that's been my challenge, very ill. So we're challenging that whole life right now, which is beautiful and hard all at the same time. But I'm very grateful to have all these principles to be able to use um, to navigate it all. So. Mm -hmm. You talk about going into the crazy. I relate to that. I think everybody right. can relate to that, going into that crazy. And I, I feel like what I also want to add to this conversation too is this concept that we're in as a society of just constant production or constant work as if our lives are meant to just um, continuously create a lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. We work for our money so that we can have a better lifestyle. Um, and we also work to survive. And I really feel like this chapter has helped me to lean into the idea that life is meant to be lived and mm -hmm. finding that balance away from that crazy. Um, to me, crazy can sometimes be like nose down, working, you know, multiple hours throughout the week, just trying, trying, trying. And balance can also mean taking a step back and finding your inner calm and remembering, you know, what life is really 
about. And it's not about that overproduction and that work and, you know, hours and money and all of that, but it's about taking a moment back to feel that balance and to feel your soul self. You know, we're, we're on chapter 10 at this point of living in soul alignment. So this is where we really start to feel our soul self coming to the forefront. And that was my discovery in finding my soul self. Mm. I think I love how you were saying all that because, you know, where I was when I wrote this book, my crazy was a different place. And um, you're speaking from such an, an evolved space, which is so beautiful. And when I wrote the book, I was, you know, I wrote the book for myself, right, to to help myself to move through and to navigate out of the identity I was in, which was, you know, not someone who was aligned with their goddess self, not someone who was, you know, understanding the wisdom was the guidance and the love being sent from heaven and so leading into this balance leading into what it means now and here is a lot like what you're seeing it's it's very different it's very evolved and I can look back and still like see some of the same pieces like I'm not like everywhere you go there you are like even though it's it's been all these years and I'm a different person I'm still the same person and so my balance is returning to myself. It's returning to what I know to be true. It's doing the, the things that I know are going to serve my highest and best. And then listening to that intuition. So that's the easiest place. You know, faith is the number one thing. Your relationship with, with God, my relationship or higher power, whatever that is for you, but relationship and faith are the number one things to return to balance. It's nothing I can do on my own. Um, I don't know if you find that too, but like um, higher power, higher power, higher power is where I turn what I don't understand into love, into a semblance of, okay, just be patient. You know, there is patience. Like when we want answers and we want to get out of that crazy and that productive mode that we're in of overproducing or over creating or, um, or being defined as our work self. And not as a human, not as our goddess self, right? Um, how do we get there? It is, it is through that voice of God, it is through that inner wisdom is where we hear it. And when we're restful and when we're in our balance, we can, we can be guided instead of leading, leading ourselves into like a train wreck. And you, you talk about meditation mm -hmm. a lot as one of the kind of keys to bringing you back to balance. And I feel like you, that's where you do connect with source energy to help you find your balance, right? Right. And meditation, you know, a lot of people will say to me, well, Jeannie, I can't meditate. I can't meditate. And I was that person. I was the person that, you know, was trying to meditate and trying to make myself be quiet within. And I, and I couldn't get there, but meditation is a prayer. Meditation is a stillness. Meditation is going into a thought of, I'm okay in this moment. It's breathing in and breathing out. Meditation is just a stillness that we can pause in a moment when things are really hefty and big and we can come back in. That's a meditation. It doesn't have to be a long time. It doesn't have to be a formal thing. It can be like Colleen at the hospital where, they're, where their dad just breathing in in a moment and just taking in the semblance of I'm present, I'm here and I'm okay doesn't have to be this big to do, right? We don't have to be on a specific yoga mat pillow, you know, right. where the rest of the world is quiet. And that's not where meditation happens. Meditation happens in the crazy. The stillness yes. happens internally. The stillness yes. is not going to happen around us, which then allows us to go still inside. We create the stillness inside mm -hmm. of ourselves, even among the crazy. That's the whole point of the balance, right? So it's the whole point of, you know, can I turn my, my attention, my inner, inner self to faith? Can I, like for me, when I feel, and I'll just say right now, like, look, I have, I have COVID and it has, COVID has its dark side, which I know a lot of people understand that, that have gone through it. Um, it, it has its, its moments where it brings you to a depressing kind of attitude. Like you feel almost like you're trapped within yourself and finding that space where I can be in a moment, I'll say my rosary. Um, I will, you know, just turn to prayer. I'll, I'll just call God in. It's something that pulls you out 
of that feeling of almost being trapped. And it's a lot like when you're depressed, it's a lot like, you know, I've had those bouts throughout my life, um, especially after my having my babies where I would have like postpartum, um, where you feel like the outside world is continuing, but you're kind of inward and stuck and you, you're just like witnessing and nothing makes sense. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys understand or if you've ever had any experiences like that, but finding our balance isn't about changing something about myself or, you know, denying that this is happening. It's about finding God, finding space and returning to that breath and just being like, I'm okay. In this moment, I'm okay. In this moment, I feel safe. In this moment, in this moment, in this moment. Yeah, I feel like that that also, um, for me, that's what meditation is too, is bringing yourself into this moment. Um, mm -hmm. when, you, when you start to think about the past or the future, you know, what you need to do next or what you should have done yesterday or conversations and ruminations. It's like breathe, bring yourself back to right now. What can I, even when I can't sleep, sometimes I'll do that. I'll lay in bed and I'll be like, the best thing you can do to solve all your problems of tomorrow is to get a good night rest. So just be where you are, let your body relax. And, you know, so I feel like that's also another piece to meditation. I love that you just said that because it's almost like you do have to talk yourself through. And that is the best way to find your balance is when you ignore your inner voice, when you ignore what you need and you push it away, the crazy comes back in. But you listen to yourself and you're like, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. And you breathe and you're like, this moment, I'm okay. If I sleep, I'll be better. If I take a rest, I'll be, you know, this will serve me. And not deny yourself, not deny yourself um, what your body is calling for, right? Because the body does need support. Mm -hmm. If it needs a nap, it needs a nap. And I've been taking a lot of those lately. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have a great quote in here from the Dalai Lama, I think the 14th. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, inner peace is the key. If you have inner peace, external problems do not affect your deep sense of peace and tranquility. Without this inner peace, no matter how comfortable your life is materially, you may still be worried, disturbed, or unhappy because of the circumstances. So, so you inner can, peace is key. Yeah, you can have all the things. You could work your butt off and have all of the success, money, big house, cars, whatever it is that you have been desiring, you, you could call all that in. But if you don't have inner peace, if you're not in tune with your highest soul self, that's all material. And it just, it, it weights you. It doesn't lift you. So that's where our doing, what you were saying earlier, like it's not productive. It goes against our soul self if we are aligned first with why are we, why are we working? You know, why are we in a, in a field? Is it just to have the money? Is it just to have the success? Is it like, we need to look at that, right? Is it my calling? And, and then are we serving? Uh, from that standpoint and are we healing our inner wounds because a lot of people you know famously will step into their their purpose and their passion and they don't seem to go far they don't seem to manifest all that's right for them um, we can look at artists they say the starving artists right they they lean into all of their art and then they're like they're not getting anywhere um, because a lot of time we don't move the needle in our life because our pain is so much bigger and our, our internal wounds are so unhealed that that love can't come to us. Whatever that abundance is for us, it can't come to us because we're still in pain and we're still um, releasing that into the world by the inner thoughts and the inner chaos. But I think it's a good segue to mind, body, and spirit and kind of connecting those those three pieces um or mind body and soul um and you talk about how each one has their own separate energy but that the energy has to all be connected in order to be in alignment right yeah our mind has an energy to it so what we are thinking um i've been in a trap in the loop of the negative um where that's really where i started um before I started writing the book, that's why the book, you know, the steps came to me because I was in that loop. My, my mind was in, was like in the gutter. Like what I was allowing to happen was the repeated lifetime movies, the old stories, the drama, the drama, the drama. 
And so when we clean up the mind, we're taking responsibility for what thoughts are popping in. And responsibility means that we're softening our tone, right? So that has an energy to it. The body, our physical body, you know, are we caring for our body? Are we ignoring our, our body's signals? You know, that comes from like our food, from our, you know, how we're filling our body. Um, are we are we listening? Are the things that's serving us coming in? For a long time, I was ignoring my body's signals and I was just, you know, eating whatever and doing what I wanted to do. And and my body was suffering because of it. It was, it was turning against itself. It was like, hey, I can't digest this ice cream. You've got to stop it. <laughs> and, um, and I didn't want to hear it. I didn't, I wanted to ignore it. And so I started to notice, like, if I shift the vibration and I start moving into love into saying like, well, this will serve my body. It will feel better. I did feel better. And when I approached things, I was like, hmm, okay, if I do this, I'm going to do it out of love. And that has a different vibration. So your body will know that. It's like a lot like a house plant. You know, if you talk to your house plant, your house plant will grow if you speak love to it. And I mean, there's science behind this. Or if you talk to your house plant and you tell it, like, you know, you're a bad house plant, you're so mean to it. Well, your house plant is going to, it's going to shrivel. It's not going to do well. And the same is for your body. So if you're constantly saying, you know, you don't look good, you know, we know this as women, if we talk that negative talk to ourselves, well, you could use some, lose some weight, look at you, what the hell you think you're doing? Um, Guess what's going to happen? The body's going to respond. The energy we're putting out, it's going to respond. And then our soul or our highest soul self, are we feeding our soul? That is an energy behind it too. Like, are we going against our moral code? Are we going against who we really are? Who, who we've been, um, who God programmed us to be really? Like, are we, are we loving ourselves? Are we leaning into the possibilities of uh, what our calling is and our purpose? Are we, are we expanding ourselves and learning? So that has a whole nother vibration. Uh, in your book, you talk about enlightenment and you say that for a long time, you were lost in the idea that enlightenment was out of your reach and that you learned through spirit's teachings that enlightenment is actually a state of mind and that you can access this state by your intentions and your willingness to be in a higher vibration. And that enlightenment is what comes to you when you're able to shed the ego mind, which you were just talking about. I feel like it's the ego mind that says, you look really overweight in that shirt. You should not wear that shirt out. Right, but the, exactly. Yeah, and the enlightenment mind is the one that says, you're so beautiful and your yeah. soul is shining through and it doesn't matter whether you're wearing a cloth, a towel or a $600 dress. You look amazing because you're shining and you're glowing. That's the enlightened state of mind is this, this pureness and happiness in this being of love unconditionally. Yeah, the ego mind really takes over and, and dims the light on love. It doesn't want us to have the vibrancy. And enlightenment is, is not something you get. Enlightenment is, is you already. Like, it's in essence you. So your enlightenment is you just leaning into you and you and God. That's what your enlightenment is not looking outside. Yep. Yep. So mind, body, spirit, soul, right? That's what we're talking about right now. You say, let's break it down and you go into it. You say meditation and breath work are your tools for having that high vibrational mind energy. And then knowing the tone of ego helps Mm -hmm. you to clear the mind of cluttered energy body energy comes from what you put in your body. And I love that conversation of, you know, what you put in your body is all vibrational. Mm -hmm. And once you can shift the conversation to be, you know, the conversation with yourself, I'm putting this food into my body because it's going to raise my vibration because it's going to make me feel good. And I'm going to stay away from that food because it doesn't make me feel good. Not because I'm losing weight, not because I'm doing this, that, and the other thing. I'm doing it to keep my vibration where I want my vibration to be. Exactly. So we're setting our intention is really what we're doing. An intention with every single principle matters. Intention in our life is our queen move. It's who who we get to be. So our intention of, I'm going to lean into, you know, finding a small time to meditate. Even if you have 10 minutes where you're just still. 
holding food in your hand or in your thoughts before you put it in your body. Like, is this going to serve me? And how even asking yourself, like, how will this serve me? And, you know, what I've even found is um, people that have like a lot of stress and inner worry and you know, they won't even like, I wouldn't even eat sugar or drink wine. I wouldn't do anything. And I would cut myself off and not allow myself to have fun, so to speak, because I thought that was health. And I thought that was better. And what I found was that was another form of controlling energy. And so if I'm going to have sugar, if I'm going to have a piece of candy, I'm going to do it in the vibration of love. I'm going to be like, you know what, this does serve me today because I really love this chocolate. I really like the taste of it. And, you know, it's one, it's one piece of chocolate over, you know, whatever it is. So um, I don't even measure it out. Like if I want to eat a whole box of M&Ms at the movies, I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it in the vibration of love. I'm going to do it in the frequency of like, this is so good. And I feel like a child. I feel like a kid when I went to the movie theater. And if I'm going to have a green juice, I'm going to do that in the same vibration. I'm going to be like, I love this green juice because it's going to serve me. It's going to fill my body with all the the nutrients and love, you know? So it's the frequency in which we do things. And then the spirit or soul energy comes from your faith and your spiritual connection. That's your prayer. That's your, that's your time with your higher power, with God, with, with, your angels at your time when you are spending uh, filling back up filling your cup back up with with that holiness i love on page 147 um you talk about divine connection and faith and you kind of describe mm. each one but faith um faith mm. in particular you say know that to have faith you must have love love is the constant in everything love never fails it is your choice it is your choices that fail, not love. Mm-hmm. Wow. I like that. I love that. <laughs> I wrote that. Um, I do that. I like that. I wrote that. Oh, my. I really like that. Um, I really like that, too. Because Really? Like, if I just leaned into that and trusted that that was the way to everything mm-hmm. else, mm-hmm. Not that it's simple, because it isn't, because it is not because we're humans, um, which I think God is just always laughing, like, oh, <laughs> I made you human and divine at the same time, and I gave you choices. <laughs> I think yeah. he has a great sense of humor. But <laughs> <laughs> I just think, um, and then at the end of that, you say, changing your thoughts. <clears throat> so this goes back to the original list of identifying fear versus love. Changing your thoughts to love thoughts, seeing others through the eyes of love or God, Mm -hmm. forgiving through faith in love are all your tools that can change every situation. Every situation. Open your gifts and allow you to become one with your inner goddess. You know, this is such a powerful thing. Um, And it's so funny. It's just touching me so much today uh, because I was talking to my granddaughter, Maisie. She FaceTimed me earlier this morning and she's at her dad's and she's in the car waiting for everybody to get in the car to go to school. And she just looks so sweet. She, she FaceTimed me last night and she FaceTimed me again from her dad's. And, um, and it's just a reminder, like they went through this yucky thing, you know, the kids having to watch their parents separate and get divorced. And, and I was thinking about my own feelings when Maisie called me, you know, I was thinking about love and how love is infinite. Love doesn't end just because a divorce happens. Love isn't, you cannot remove your love from where you have placed it. And so it just, it just struck me this morning as, you know, she was sitting there in the car all lit up and happy to see me and checking on my hubby and checking on Hope, our dog, and how innocent and free she is. And, and I just thought, you know, love is still there, even though All of this stuff has happened because I get to choose compassion. I get to go and rise above and look at the situation from a point of view of, I don't like what happened and I don't understand what happened, but I don't have to. And I get to pray. I get to pray for healing. And that's the power that we have is that we get to choose. So that free will, that choice is, it's, it's worth everything that is your purest abundance like that is the pot of gold you get to choose that 
and things are going to be hard. They're going to be hard. It's going to be a messy situation. You know it. Life is, we're not getting out of here without mess and yuck it, where it's going to happen. And I promise, like from my point of view of the things that I've gone through, that if we allow faith to lead us, it'll soften our hearts. It'll remind us that whatever situation you have going on, if there's something, some discernment between you, I'm sorry, that's not the right word. If there's some yickiness between you and another, that God can be in the middle instead of the anger, the hate, the frustration, whatever, the bitterness, whatever, God could be in the middle and he can work miracles. He can work the best miracles. You have no idea. It's just, you can't imagine until you put him there and let go. And as you connect with the divine and you set daily practices and you start to hear your inner goddess, you voice. And I, I really loved during our book study, which just finished last week, we went through all 12 of these principles. Colleen led us. Jeannie, you hopped in every three weeks, every three chapters to give some additional insight. And we, can, we could ask you questions and a wonderful, wonderful group of women that came together every Monday night. And while we were discussing this chapter, uh, I had the opportunity to ask everyone, actually, I set a timer. I set a timer because I said, you know what? We are having a hard time journaling. I feel it. You know, I feel mm -hmm. that it's hard to set the time aside to journal um, because we are so busy. And so I said, we allotted this time to sit down together to, you know, meet from six to seven thirty. Uh, let's set a timer and journal. So I set a four minute timer and I asked everyone to journal about what their goddess you sounds like. Mm. What is it? What is your, what does your goddess you sound like? What does she feel like? What does she taste like? What does she look like? You had them Nancy drew it. I had the Nancy drew it yeah. and we did we Nancy drew it and to hear some some of the women shared what their goddess you sounds like oh so beautiful so beautiful so wonderful to hear all of this and I and I feel like this is what leads us to the last chapter of this book the intuitive uh goddess you or the intuitive gifted you yeah but you're right the intuitive goddess you you know the that because that's you mm-hmm because we we've all been given the gift of intuition. It's not just for me. It's not just for you know anyone else. It's it's for everyone. Everyone. It's your inner guidance system. It's your it's your uh, connection to God to the and highest. Each, yeah. yeah, and each one of these principles leads you to a deeper connection to your intuition. Yes as you're following the path of living in soul alignment, you find your soul self and your intuition just, it, I feel like it happens naturally when you start to discover self-love and you're changing your reactions and you're understanding your energy and you're becoming healthy, wealthy, and wise, your intuition just automatically becomes so much more heightened and powerful and open. And your third eye becomes so much more dialed open and you start receiving love so much more. Right. And you start trusting yourself, which I think is like Jeannie, you said that we all have intuition, but I think we, we don't trust it. We doubt it. We want to listen to all the voices and all the things that are happening around us and they must know better yes. and they must know better and we should do it that way and we should do it that way and we should look like this and we should buy that. And instead of trusting our own inner guidance to teach us what our lives are supposed to be like and what path we're supposed to walk on. It's, and, and I think you can also do, I, I think that's a really important point. And then you can also get really stuck in your opinionation. You can be entrapped too, and you think it's intuition, but really it's opinionation. And that can be a stopping point as well. Um, you know, I've learned a lot from listening to spirit about this because we, you know, one, you're right. Like we want do you have my answers? Do you have my answers? Do you have my, like, do you have my manual that says what I'm supposed to do? Do you know what my life's purpose is? I mean, I definitely was there searching outside of myself. I got tons of readings. I went for all, I took every class under the sun. I have more certifications than I know what to do with <laughs> because I was always looking for the answers to who I am to what I'm supposed to do. Like I was always out there looking, looking, looking. And it wasn't until I went through this process myself and then even writing it brought it back again was like, wait, I already am. You already are you. 
And so the big trick here is one, are you looking inward first and are people mirroring to you? Like, are they showing you the things about yourself that you can one heal? They're showing you things about maybe you're feeling envious or jealous, or maybe you're like, I wish, I wish, I wish. And that's really like your cue in that. Yes, you are. Um, this is you too. God is showing you. He's giving you a compliment. He's, he's loving you. He's providing it for you. And all of this is like, oh, it's a big cue in. But again, our obstacles are, is, has, has ego taken over and we've become complacent to our opinions and opinionation will close down that, that flow of intuition because it will be the stopping force for the guidance, right? We make up our mind, we prejudge, we assign meaning um, because of what we've been through, our pain, our trauma, and our sufferings, right? It happens very easily in families. I know this in my, with my siblings too, like they're not the same people that they were when they were kids. You know, this, this is what we forget, but we hold them. At least I did. I, I was holding them in that same manner, like as if they weren't adults and hadn't figured some shit out. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's interesting. Well, I also think um, talking about gifts and I think knowing that our gifts are actually born with us. Um, it's, mm. it's, it's like, it's like, we don't have to try our gifts are just there all the time in everything that we do. It's not a specific mm -hmm. thing. It's how we show up to do the thing that gives us our gifts. Talents are different. Those are, those are a little bit, um, more of a doing thing perhaps, but the, the gift is just the essence of, of who we are and how we right. show up and everything that we do. So we don't have to try. It's just there. Yeah. I say this in my second book, we talk a lot about a little further into gifts and talents. And we talk about the ings, which are your actions. So your talents and your talents are your expression. It's how you release energy and it's how your gifts get open. So the more that we're using our ings, which are like cooking, dancing, singing, painting, um, whatever it is for you, the more creative you are, hiking, walking, um, talking to nature, like the more you are processing that energy, well, the more open your gifts are and your gifts are your connection to God. And we all have them. Like I said, intu intuition is it's wired within. You can't not be intu intuitive. You are. And so awakening our gifts just means that we're going to lean into the possibility that our senses are going to come enlivened and come on board when we start participating with expression. You had a podcast a couple of weeks ago that your senses are your gifts. Yes. I loved that podcast because it made it so much, so much more accessible for, mm. you know, myself, I've never identified as a medium. I don't see myself as a medium. I wasn't born with that dial, you know, just kind of tuned way open. I'm not one of those people that's like, oh yes, I've been seeing spirit at the base of my bed every night. And I've heard a lot of mediums say things like that. But on this journey of self-discovery and soul alignment, it's been so rewarding to learn that that's okay. That's not my gift. My gift, I'm not, you know, a medium. I'm not channeling spirit in that way. Mm -hmm. But myself and all of the other people who are identifying their gifts, we're learning that we've got all of these senses inside of our, inside of our body. And we can tap into these senses to harness our gifts. So yes. you, you talk about all of the clairs, right? There's all these clairs. I had no idea that there was clairsentience, the ability to know spirit's message through a feeling in your physical body. Then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I am gifted. Wait, I, I've been doing that since I was a baby that mm -hmm. I've known. Yeah. It helped well, me so much. I love, I mean, I like explaining the clairs. I think it's important to, um, to go over like what they are, but when we break it down that it's senses, I'm sorry, I'm looking for it. And we realize, wait, I have senses. And so, um, yeah, One, thank you. 153. Yeah. Um, I have senses. And so this sense seems to be more tuned to spirit than the other. So you all have senses and yes, some are going to be more tuned to the spirit realm than others. Some are going to be more leaning in. So you might not be you might be receiving messages from departed loved ones, but 
still your gig is not to be a medium in this life. Your gig is to do, you know, something else with that. God knows and he'll, he'll give you the guidance and support that you need in order for you to fulfill that soul destiny. And that's what's the most important thing. I like, I think that's really important that you brought this up too, because I remember being really envious of maybe envious, not like the right word, just really wanting to freaking be a singer. Like I just always wanted to sing. And as a kid, I had, you know, this stereo in my room and I could record myself with my mic and, and I did. And my husband and I were watching Christina Aguilera and I'm like, oh, if I could only sing like her, like that is, that would be the oh my gosh, like, I don't know what, that was just like, like, oh my gosh. And he looked at me and he's like, and I bet she would say the same thing if she was standing in front of you. I just wish I could connect to heaven the way you do. And I thought, what? And he just was so serious about it. He said, but you're putting a value on something. He said, it's good to to like it, but you're putting a value on something when you are a value. And I didn't realize I was devaluing myself, but I was. And that was a big aha moment. It was like, wow. It's so cool when we lean into our own gifts. It's so cool when we discover our own gifts. Mm -hmm. When we recognize that we have a gift, but it's not what we're, you know, looking at in someone else. That's their gift. Exactly. And let that be their gift and love that gift for them. And then go back inside to find your gift because you can even taste spirit and you can know spirit because that's claircognizance and you can have all of these clairgustant to be able to, you know, taste spirit's message and clairalliance, the ability to smell spirit's message. Mm -hmm. Like you've got all of these senses and those are your gifts. So don't discredit them. If you smell something and you're like, like for me, I smell my grandfather and I'm like, whoa, huh, somebody just must be wearing my Papa's cologne. It's my house. Nobody's walked through this house yep. alone. I'm smelling my grandfather because he's here. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do is to bring people on a meditation where I bring them to their light room in heaven. And I do this meditation where I, it's, it's amazing. I'm going to write about it in the next book, but basically I'm bringing you to your light room in heaven. We all have one and you get to experience what your senses are because so many times I'll run a group event and they'll be like, I don't have, nope, 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 nope. And I did one recently. It was like three weeks ago and I had my knower in the front row and she was like, you know, she was trying to figure it out. She was attending. She didn't know why she was there. And I'm like, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I can't wait for this meditation. Um, Of course, there were a couple other there, but she was my like, she was my person. I was most excited to have this experience. So I did the meditation, led them, brought them back out and then asked them a series of questions. And the questions are just like, you know, did you see this? Did you feel that? (laughs) You know, did you smell this? Did you taste that? Um, all of these things that go through your senses and you know everyone she's raising her hand and I said so you have the gift of sight and you have and she was like her her jaw hit the ground and she was like wait what and I said your body can't lie you can't fake an experience you can't fake it and so when you start to learn this about yourself that's when it's like what's possible what is God asking me to do to further in the field I'm in to, um, to take life in a different direction. Like, what does God ask? What are the possibilities here? What are the possibilities? Mm. Mm -hmm. You talk a lot about, um, being an empath in this, in this principle. Yes. Yeah. Being the empath is such a, um, a trigger for people. (laughs) You know, how many times have you, well, I'm an empath. I can't go out. Um, oh, oh, I'm just an empath. And I'm like, well, that's, that's all silliness. Like, um, I had somebody once ask me, like, can you go out in public? You know, are you, are you seeing dead people all the time? You know, I know this person and this person, they, they can't. And I'm like, for me, I've shut it down. Like for me, I learned to close that door when I was little. And so, yeah, of course I can close it down tell them off, off duty. Like I can go to 
you know, the mall and I can go to Disney World and I'm not going to be reading dead people. Trust me, because nobody, I don't have time for that. I would just be exhausting and God doesn't want that for me. So it's one of the things I love teaching in my angel healer program is like, you have this gift of being sensitive, of being an empath, of, of being able to lean into other people's energy. It doesn't mean you have to walk away and feeling like that person or feeling like you have no help or there's nothing available for you. Um, so it's a gift, right? The, we do also have to understand like with that gift comes a responsibility because left unhealed and I'll say unhealed because when we are an empath and we are messy, meaning we're open and we're receiving all the time and we're taking that stuff home and we're not releasing the energy, it physically changes us. It physically can change your DNA. It can shift you from the person that you are to a person that of the energy you picked up and then you lose sight of who you truly are so we do have to claim a responsibility around our empath abilities it's not a it's not a um a sentence it's not something bad it's actually something really beautiful it's a game changer when you start to recognize what energy is yours and what energy is someone else's that you've picked up game changer and I took you I went with you to your empath and sensitive soul masterclass which you have another one if you're listening to this in summer of 2022 uh, you have another one coming up in August and um just a game changer total game changer because having the gift of being an empath can be really tricky And it takes some time and dedication, this is what you say, to understand what energy belongs to you and what energy belongs to another. And uh, after years, being unaware of having taken on energy that was not your own, it's possible that you may have damaged your own being with the fear and energy you unknowingly took on from others. Just, it's wild. I I had an experience this past weekend where we were at a restaurant and all of a sudden I was like, oh, I'm so sad. And then this, the questions start coming. Why am I sad? Oh, am I homesick? I'm trying to assign it, right? As you talk about, I'm trying to assign it. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait, oh my God, it's not mine. It's not mine. And I kind of like, I looked around the room and I'm like, oh, and this room is sad right now. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. okay, never mind. We're just going to let it go. <laughs> We're just going to let it go. It doesn't belong to me. And, you know, so our next thing is with this, you know, with the energy that we do pick up as an empath, it's not, it's not for us to necessarily do anything with, you know, why does it happen? Well, maybe your guard is down. Maybe you walked in exposed and not, uh, you haven't dialed your energy centers in enough. So maybe you're picking it up um, because innocently you just left yourself, you left the door open, inviting a guest in, right? Um, Maybe... God is saying, can you pray for this person? They're really sad. You know, maybe you're the, you know, stepping in as that healer role role of, I can feel this and this doesn't feel comfortable. And I imagine they're not comfortable. So I'm just going to send some love and light. And so calling an angel in, calling an archangel in, just blessing them and releasing. I just love the two quotes by Albert Einstein. I don't know why they just really speak to me. Um, Because when I think of Albert Einstein, I think genius, right? Like gifted in his mind. And yet he says, the only real valuable thing is intuition. Right. And so what is he saying? The only real thing is intuition. It means he's saying that our inner wisdom is the truth. Yep. We wouldn't be here today with our ring lights and our, (laughs) if Albert Einstein didn't follow his intuition because the outside world told him he's crazy. Yep. He, he, you also, I'm going to read the second quote as well. He said, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. And isn't that still true today? Well, I feel like this has been like so much fun hanging out with you ladies, going through the book chapter by chapter and being intimate, being able to go in a little deeper um, in areas that maybe I haven't gone before and learning some things about myself. Um, 
again, I think the goddess you continues to teach and enrich my life. I think the biggest lesson I, I would love people to walk away with is getting to know your soul self is the best thing that you can do, not only for your life, but for the lives of others that are around you. Um, it will enhance you and fill you with God's grace and love. And I'm excited because we, um, we're going to add in a meditation, the lighthouse meditation, which is at the end of the book, which you can, oops, sorry, you can read. I don't know if you can see it. Um, you can read through yourself. You can have a friend guide you on it, but we're going to put it at the end of the podcast for you. So you can listen and you can let go and allow yourself to receive. Yeah. And we have some, some offers for you, like some ways that you can go in a little bit further to know about your gifts. Um, my um, Angel Mediumship Third Eye Masterclass, which we'll put the link in below the video as well, is a perfect place to start to get to understand how your third eye, your gift of seeing in the veil is actually um, something that you have and maybe you haven't realized it but uh, inside of that it's and it's free so there's no um, no exchange of, of money just an exchange of email but in that master class there are two amazing meditations one in the beginning and one at the very end and it's eight videos long so not, not too you know too much to handle but it will really give you the sense of okay this is really great and now now what and one of the meditations is, you know, you get to go to that light room in heaven, which is a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Jeannie, for having us on, you know, and, and sharing, sharing this book one with us, you know, it's one thing for you to receive these 12 principles, you know, and implement them into your own life. But then what's so beautiful about you is you, you were so moved by them that you said, you know what, I need to share this. I need to share this, this groovy living in the soul alignment self. And so thank you for sharing it with women and, and men too. Um, men can find their inner goddess, right? <laughs> yes, they can. Uh, <laughs> and so thank you so much for sharing it with, with all of us, everyone that's read it and everyone that's been affected by it too, because if you know someone who's living in soul alignment, it's contagious. It really does start to spread. Um, and so thank you so much for having us here on the podcast too. It's been such a pleasure to talk about all of these principles and how we're implementing them into our life. And Colleen, I love hearing from you. And thank you so much for leading us in the book study that you did on this book. That was so chef's kiss. It's, <laughs> it's been such a pleasure to, to be spending these four parts with you ladies. Such, such an honor. Yeah, I think Colleen and I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Totally. Amazing. blessed 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 well thank you thank you thank you everyone for tuning in you were meant to be here you were meant to listen uh share this with your friends you know that sharing is caring and uh i'm on the mend so god bless you and you know i know what i know because angels don't lie have a most beautiful beautiful day All right, so just get yourself in a really comfortable position. So maybe close your eyes. Yep, move move your body around. Um, if you can, close your eyes or definitely gaze away from the computer to stay in your own energy. We're going to stay with the rhythm of our own breath. So you're going to cycle breathe. I'm going to guide you through it. So you still stay with your own rhythm. If you feel yourself moving out of my voice or going back into your thoughts, just gently make your way back to a count. Remember the cycle breath is a count of five. In, pausing for five, holding that in the belly, 
releasing to the five, and then pausing for five before you take a new breath. Great job. So we're gonna set our intention right now. Our intention to connect with God, your higher power, to open our hearts, and to be connected with our gift, your unique gift of being a lighthouse. Begin with bringing your breath in through your nose, exhaling slowly through your mouth, allowing your belly to rise with slow, steady breaths. I want you to notice your breath as it fills your body. Notice how this breath nourishes every organ, your blood, your cells, your bones, everything. With every inhalation, just see if you can bring your breath a little deeper, hold it a little longer. And with every exhalation, see if you can release something somewhere in your being. Now with our intention of connecting with our gifts, we're gonna move our awareness to the crown of our head. Just envisioning your crown becoming tingly and light and opening an invitation to receive the energy flow is automatic it's bright it's light and loving your senses come on board here everything becomes enlivened as you just receive that divine download you don't have to do or be anything. You just have to be open to receiving it. The energy floats through as energy, just in messages and breath. It just shifts and clears out whatever needs to be cleared out. As you breathe, just see if you can let go a little bit more. Allowing yourself to become one with that holy light. We're going to stay in this vibration, stay in this frequency, noticing the shift in our muscles, any tingling, any sensations you have. We're going to just notice and we're going to begin to do this beautiful chant. I am that I am. 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 We're reaffirming that we are one with the divine. We are one with God. God said, I am. Call me that. And we are reaffirming, I am that I am. We are created. In that likeness, we are God. We are that light within. I am that I am. We're going to just take a moment here to sit with God. To allow our senses to come on board. To receive love, frequency messages, healing, whatever it is that God has for you in this moment. It's just a willingness to let go. I 
I am that I am. I am love. I am light. I am surrender. I am peace. I am joy. Add in your I am. I'm going to invite you now into a gratitude moment to thank God for this moment, to thank the divine energy for flowing through you, to you, for you, for opening the path, for releasing the resistance or the pain, the suffering, whatever has been holding you. Thank you, God, for this moment. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for the semblance of peace, if even for just one moment. Thank you for the kinship with these women. Thank you for the fostering of new relationships and the healing of the wound I didn't know was there. Thank you for reminding me that I don't have to try hard or look outside of myself. Thank you. Take a nice deep inhale. And when you're ready, maybe just bow in reverence to this moment to yourself slowly allowing your eyes maybe to take in the floor first. Allow yourself time if you need it before you come back to the computer. 